Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Ginny and this is the Big Sew Along. Uh, if this is your first time here, then welcome to you too. I'm glad you stopped by. As always, I'm really glad that you guys choose to spend a little time with me. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please hit like, subscribe, share me with your sewing friends, that kind of stuff. So, last week, for anybody who is unaware, and I'm sure there are none of you, uh, last week was Thanksgiving here in the U.S., which means that Friday was uh, Black Friday, which is like started out as a huge shopping day in the U.S. And now, especially since I, I feel like, especially since COVID, it's really like just gone worldwide. And I think that that's because so many people are just shopping online these days. But anyways, I um, yeah, there were a ton. I don't know. You guys probably had the same thing. I, my inbox has just been blowing up for like a solid week with. Um, deals on all kinds of sewing things, you know, um, everything from Joann's to smaller, uh, fabric stores to Etsy, pattern makers, everybody. Um, but I am very proud of myself. I did not, uh, I did not do any, uh, Black Friday shopping this year. Um, certainly not for patterns or fabric because I need none of those things. Um, I don't know if I've shared this with you guys before or not, but in a previous lifetime, uh, my actual career was in retail and I worked for years and years, uh, I'm going to say close to 30 altogether, um, as a salesperson and then a manager and then a regional manager. Um, and anybody who has, who lived through the eighties, nineties, and I'm going to say right up until through the two thousands, and worked in retail knows that Black Friday was a veritable nightmare for retail workers. Hours were really long, breaks were really short, and the crowds of people were insane. So, uh, just the term Black Friday gives me the heebie-jeebies, so I really avoid that stuff like the plague. I did, however, do a little shopping on um, small Shop Small Saturday? Is that what it's called? I should know that. Anyways, um, I, I went to my local yarn shop. I think I told you guys I have been working on a sweater. I'll put a picture of it here. It's a Lori Versace design. I've been working on it for a while now, but it's and it's really cute and I really like it, but it's literally yard like miles and miles of stock in that stitch. The only thing to break it up really is the stripes, which is not that much of a break. So I did stop by the yarn shop and picked up um, some yarn and a pattern to make a quick feral hat for a friend of mine for Christmas, hoping that'll like break my boredom with my sweater for a little bit and then I can get back into it. Um, okay, that's enough about, about that stuff. What else do I have to tell you about? I am... <laughs> You guys remember last week, of or last, it was actually two weeks ago now, we were talking about my iron, and um, I was telling you that I got a new iron, this new Rowenta with the, like, big steam thing, and everybody had, like, lots of comments on that, and, <laughs> but here's the thing. Rachel commented, try cleaning your iron. <laughs> yeah. So, I feel like a complete idiot, because, of course... Of course, you have to clean your coffee maker. Why wouldn't you have to clean your iron? Of course you have to clean your iron. I, it, you know, to be honest with you guys, it really didn't occur to me. And so now I feel kind of like an idiot. But I, I am going to clean both of those irons that are not working. The only thing is, I will say, for both of those, I didn't have either of them long enough for there to be an issue, I feel like with that, with them being like calcified or whatever from water. I'm gonna clean them anyway and see what happens. At least that way, if I take one to the Salvation Army, it will be in working order. Um, and uh, yeah, so Rachel, thank you for for your reality check. Yes, I should definitely be cleaning my irons. And also, uh, she said to use um, distilled water. Now, the current iron I have and also the Alyssa Bose, you don't need to use uh, distilled water, but I don't know. 
you guys, should you use distilled water anyway? Is that still better for your iron even if it doesn't say you need it? Let me know if you have thoughts about that. Let me know in the comments because I'd be curious to know. I will buy distilled water for my iron if that's better. Um, I just I just don't really know. Okay, anyways, uh, what else? The other thing I was talking about in my last video was my bed. Sorry, getting my bed into the bedroom and um, yeah, again, how much Claude has been enjoying the new bed. So right after that, my curtains got delivered. Now, I could have made curtains myself, but I, I, I don't do a lot of home decorating sewing, so it would have really been a challenge for me. Also, the uh, my bedroom has, I think it had a total of 12 curtains, and they go from the floor to the ceiling, or the ceiling to the floor, I guess with linings because the whole thing is windows and um so i was really not confident in my skills to be able to do that properly so i um hired another seamstress who does the who does curtains on a regular basis to do this for me and um i, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this picture very well I'll, I'll pop a couple pictures up here um of the curtains and how they look i really really love them they look really good with my bed um i still need to get i still need to figure out what I'm going to do paint wise. I'm going to paint this bedroom. I know I should have thought about that before I put the bed and the curtains in there, but I was a little overwhelmed. <laughs> so I'm going about this backwards to make it as difficult as possible for myself. Anyways, um, I love my new curtains. Um, I'm glad they're finally up. I can't remember where I got this fabric. Well, I got the fabric from Haberman Fabrics, but I can't remember who um, the maker is. I think it's um, Fabricut, I think is the name of the company. But the designer is Iris Apfel, um, who I'm sure most of you guys are aware of. Um, anyways, what else? I have a new lipstick today. This is the other thing I've been doing like for the holiday week. Um, I did not do any like Black Friday shopping, primarily because I did all my shopping before that, like a complete idiot. Anyways, um, if you guys watch any of the uh, cosmetics or makeup channels here on YouTube, you will probably all have heard of um, Lisa Eldridge's holiday collection. It came out like the week before Thanksgiving here in the U.S., I think. So um, I bought two new lipsticks and an eyeshadow palette from her, and they came like last week. So I'm wearing mine today, and I'm really excited about it. This one is called, I think it's called Velvet Duchess. But anyways, I'll leave a link to Lisa's channel below if you guys are interested. Um, her stuff is really amazing. And you guys know I'm kind of a makeup junkie, right? Okay, let's get back down to some sewing. So, what am I wearing today? I am wearing... This thing is called... Okay, here we go. This thing is... Uh, this is a pattern from uh, the Cutting Line Designs. And um, this fabric is kind of like a it's almost like a taffeta it's a brocade i'll show you a couple of pictures up here um that my friend susan gave me for my birthday a couple months ago and as soon as she gave me this i knew i wanted to make this pattern it is called light and shadow um i made the vest obviously um which has this like extravagant cowl on it um and i really love it this would look a lot different i think in um a drapier fabric not different in a bad way or a better way I just love the idea that you could make this in a variety of fabrics and have it look completely different I kind of am loving this top now usually in the cutting line I think I usually wear a medium or like my size is usually a medium but I usually cut like between a small and a medium because her things tend to have a little more generous fit there are a couple of things where I have been where that's been a mistake where I should have just gone with a straight medium. But on this one, I actually went with a sm straight small. And I think the fit is really good. Um, in this picture, I am wearing also another uh, Cutting Line Designs pattern. Those pants are called My Swing Set. They're the pants from My Swing Set, which is a pattern that has like a jacket also. I've never made the jacket, but I have made these pants repeatedly. And I kind of wonder sometimes why I even bother looking for another like less full pant because this one is really kind of perfect for me 
Um, it looks a little, I have made it longer and shorter. This version here is a little bit cropped. Anyways, um, I do love this pattern. And if you've never used patterns from the Cutting Line Designs, her instructions are really, really good. Um, sometimes a little, for those of us who've got a lot more experience, sometimes they can be a little labor intensive to read through, which I find, you know, but it, I would rather have it that way than the opposite way. I'd rather have too much instruction as opposed to not enough. Um, okay. The other thing I'm making, I made this week was, I just finished this. Um, the T205 oversized shirt from the assembly line patterns. Again, I'll show you a picture here. Now, uh, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I made it in this black cotton because I had the black cotton in my stash and I really felt like a black shirt would be a good addition to my wardrobe because I could wear it over my wolf work sweater and a pair of leggings or I could wear it over a ton of pants. I could wear it over just about anything. I have a lot of other slips that would look good over. Anyways, um, so the problem, that what's unfortunate is because it's black, you can't really see very well what it looks like. But I will say, this one, um, according to the chart, I would um, wear a size medium, and a medium is exactly what I cut. I didn't do any alterations to this pattern at all. Um, I love the way it fits. I really love this shirt. I will change one thing when I make it again. The um, Because I'm short, I'm only 5'2", um, the pockets are too low. <laughs> so in my next one, I am going to move the pockets up a couple of inches. The other thing is, you guys, I thought I was being a real smarty pants. And um, to get my buttonholes exactly even and perfect, I took a piece of... Um, my regular pattern tissue paper and I cut it the width and length of the button band and then I very precisely marked exactly my buttonholes all the way down the tissue paper and then I basted the tissue paper onto the button band of my shirt. Then when I went to the sewing machine it was really easy for me to see exactly where my buttonholes are supposed to be so I just sewed them down like I just sewed my buttonholes right over the tissue knowing that I would be able to pull out the basting and then tear out the tissue, right? Yeah, except that my tissue is white <laughs> and I can't get the rest of this tissue out of these stupid buttonholes. I'm so annoyed now. So I've washed the shirt once and dried it. Um, I'm hoping that with a little help from some tweezers and some patience maybe I can get some more of that out because you can see in this picture it looks like I have white buttonholes um, also it looks a little odd because I didn't actually I was so upset about my white buttonholes that I threw it in the washer and dryer before I bothered to put my buttons on so next time you see it it will hopefully not have white buttonholes but it will hopefully have buttons anyways um, I have to say that this pattern went together really well. I've made a few patterns from the assembly line. I'm working on a pair of their almost trousers, almost long pants. I think they're called almost long pants. I'm working on those right now. Um, and I, yeah, I've had pretty good luck with their patterns on like one, one dress didn't really work out that well for me, but it was a total, it was just the wrong style for me, I think. Um, it wasn't that there was nothing wrong with the pattern. Anyways, um, yeah, I had, a, I really loved this shirt. I love this shirt. I am definitely going to make this again. What else was I going to tell you? Oh, you guys, they also have, um, a, an expansion pack for this shirt now that includes, I think, four separate collars. Um, I'll try to put a picture up here. So I'm going to get that and I'm going to try to make this, I'm going to make this shirt again. Um, I think in probably, I'm definitely going to make one in white. I also have a gray fabric, a gray, really nice gray shirting fabric that would be really good. You guys may or may not remember like a few months ago when I told you I got another sewing notebook and I was going to try to keep myself really organized and blah, 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 blah. I've done this a half a dozen times at least. And here's the thing, you guys. It doesn't work for me. 
But what I have been working on lately is this. I got this, um, a croaky from someplace, you know, I can't remember. It's a place you can get it, um, online and they'll make a croaky to your measurements. That's what this is right here. Um, and I got this, I think according to my computer, it looks like I bought it in January of 2020. So I can't really remember how much it was or where I got it, but I will leave a link to that below. So anybody who's interested can go check it out. But so what I have been doing lately is I've been taking this croquis and then I've just been drawing some um, ideas over the top of it. So like this one right here is the Style Arc Sydney dress and I'm trying to use the measurements from uh, the, the um, line drawings from the website so I can see kind of how long and how wide, how fitted, you know, try to get the proportions right. So I'm looking at this in a drawing thinking already, I don't know that this is the right dress for me. Although maybe in the springtime in a really light flowy fabric. But now I know I can see just from this drawing that I don't want to make this right now. If I'm going to make it, it will be in a spring or summer fabric. This one is, um, I can't even remember. The, my assembly line, it says on here, I wrote it on here. My assembly line, almost pants. My assembly line cuff top sleeve, oh, cuff top and a skirt mashup with the stained patterns Keaton vest. That looks like an outfit that I would wear, and I really like the proportions. And so that is going to go into my notebook. And I'll show you this is um, once I drew them out like that and figured out which patterns I actually really liked and thought would work, then I did a full on like sketch like this one here and put it right into my notebook with notes about like the fabric I want to use and the pattern I'm going to use and the date and all of that stuff. So the thing I like about this is of course it's not nearly as organized as people who know exactly what they're going to make like their whole wardrobe and stuff. But what it does help me with is it definitely helps me decide what things I actually am going to like on my body. And the other thing is it also really helps me figure out what I have uh, what I already have in my wardrobe to wear with things or what what goes with things that I already have in my wardrobe or if I'm if I really have an itch to make something I can quickly sketch out a couple of different things that I already own and see if those work with the thing I want to make does that make sense all right, guys, I think that is about it for me this week. I was going to say, um, if anybody wants to sew along for either the, uh, light and shadow little vesty thing, which is by the way, pretty simple, pretty easy to make is quick and really satisfying. Um, or the assembly line oversized shirt. I am happily going to make both of those things again. So if you're interested in seeing any of those for a so long, let me know in the comments below. As always, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me. I really do appreciate it. I will see you all again very soon. And until then, I wish you happy sewing.